guys, this is actually take two because mm, I was in someone's backyard while I was filming this. It was a summer person who is never up here and there's like a beautiful shot of the mountains behind me. And as I was filming this in the middle of this video, all of a sudden I heard a squeak like a slider open. I looked up like a deer, you know, deer's head popping out of the bushes and it was someone in a lime green shirt. I was like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. And I hopped up and just, you know, explained myself and apologized. Um, so here I am, I'm down at the lake. You might hear like kids in the background splashing in the water, which is totally fine. I think that adds to the charm of real life, right? Um, so all of the past videos, um, just want to make a quick note of this. I took from another social media platform, so I feel like the quality wasn't that great. Uh, they were made for friends, so a lot of like the details probably didn't make a lot of sense. Um, and I just want to, moving forward, I think make these with a little bit of greater intentionality. Um, and the intention <laughs> is just to make stories or like tell stories about my interactions with strangers over the years and um, moments that just were uplifting to me and then I thought would give you a smile as well. Um, I think oral storytelling is something that, uh, you know, we used to do like pre-TV, we would sit around the radio and listen or we would sit around the campfire even further before that. So I think it's very much in our DNA to like really love to listen to stories. So hopefully this, you know, gives you a little bit of a smile. Anyway. So the story today starts back, let's see, about 10 years ago, I uh, changed schools, I actually went back to my hometown around 2021, 20, and I was very, um, I was very lonely, like I didn't have, my friends had gone away to college or had, you know, moved out of state, and I decided, okay, well, you know what, I think what I'm going to do then is try to join a hiking group, because I love hiking. Sorry for the phone shadow on me. There we go. Um, and I looked around for a hiking group and I didn't find any. So I said, okay, I'll make my own. Um, and this hiking group actually evolved into more of like a social group. Um, we did things like paint nights, uh, Nintendo 64 parties. I threw a 90s party. Um, and I should say that the, the way that I sort of got people to join this is I uh, messaged Facebook friends and just said, is anyone interested in this? Let your friends know. And then I also put out Craigslist ads and like put up, you know, signs in libraries and um, schools around the school campus. Um, but yeah, when I lived a bit more on the wild side, my Craigslist ad adventures, I'm sure I'll have more stories about that. <laughs> um, and yeah, so this, this group, um, you know, we very creatively called it The Society. <laughs> it really had no other name, it was just called The Society. And uh, we did things like, um, you know, we sent Christmas stockings to soldiers overseas. We made uh, Valentine's Day cards for the elderly. Um, what else did we do? Uh, we went to like polo matches. We had bonfires. Um, anyway, it was just really fun. But so that's just brief background. And um, one of the responders to my Craigslist ad was a girl who I didn't end up meeting until four years after her first message. Um, she joined one of our uh, not in-person meetups or meetings where I planned uh, Valentine's Day, like a Valentine's Day um, swap kind of. So you gave your uh, your address into like the pile into the hat and I had my brothers do this so that I could join too um, and anonymously we like matched people up um, and she actually got me I'll, I'll call her Rose in this um, she got me and everybody sent kind of like homemade cards and think like little things like that she sent me this girl that I have never met before sent me a huge cardboard box of just filled with chocolate and this beautiful card and um, a candle. It was like a positivity candle. So it had all these words on it like joy and hope and rebirth and renewal and peace and comfort. And so I would like burn that, you know, whenever I needed a little uh, extra lift. And um, this girl was Syrian. Her family were uh, asylum seekers from the war. So Two th uh, January 2017 rolled around when uh, Trump put the travel ban on um, Syrian refugees. 
and uh, a lot of people, you know, weren't sure whether they'd even be able to remain in the country if they were Syrian. Um, so I, my heart just completely went out to these people and to this girl in particular. We were friends on social media, and um, I've, you know, I've, I've never been in war before. I have lived in other countries before. I've even been threatened with deportation before. That's another story, but I just... I, I knew what that uncertainty felt like, I guess, and that fear, I, I knew a fraction of what that fear felt like. And either way, even without this, a little bit of a similar um, uh, such a, um, experience, my heart just broke for these people, and I uh, reached out to her and was like, is there anything I can do for you? Can I, like, I really wanted to take her out to lunch or to dinner. Um, and she said, yeah, let's absolutely meet up. So what ensued was just one of the most wonderful days of my life. I met up with her in the city. I did not end up treating her to dinner. In fact, she introduced me to her whole family and her mother made us this huge Middle Eastern dinner. And it was absolutely incredible. And they taught me how to like eat with my hands. You know how you'd like pinch the pinch the bread and use that instead of a, a fork, like use that as your utensil. They were so good at it. I was terrible. I kept dropping everything. <laughs> so that was amazing. And it was just, I mean, this, this girl just so strong, so gracious, so generous, so beautiful inside and out. Um, and then again, fast forward a couple years. Uh, I think this was, or like one year actually, not two, one year. And um, I got together with her again, and 2018 was probably one of the worst years of my life, <laughs> to date. Um, just like a really bad breakup, a car accident, was diagnosed with Lyme disease and black mold poisoning, and etc, etc, etc. Not that you need to know all those details, but it sort of is, comes into play a little bit. Because she, when I moved into the city, she was like, oh, I gotta come see you. Um, and she was visiting. She lived on the West Coast then, but she was visiting. So she came over to my apartment and, um, you know, after offering to help move furniture, and I was like, no, 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 we're here just to enjoy ourselves. And we went out and sat on the balcony and she sat in one corner and she was just like backed by this lovely, beautiful cherry tree. I was all in bloom. So it was like a halo of pink flowers around her head. And uh, I offered her, you know, a glass of wine, and she said, oh, no, thank you. And I remembered, oh, wait, of course, she's Muslim. She doesn't drink. Um, and so instead, I think we got, like, some peppermint tea and some chocolate and some almonds, and we just nibbled and we talked. And, uh, again, it's so funny, like, almost, ex almost a repetition, except, uh, like, different details of what happened before, because I was thinking, like, um, you know, I could be the supportive one, like I could talk to her, but instead, somehow she got it out of me with this conversation, traumas that I had gone through that year, and, um, again, this is a girl who's gone through war, like, it was amazing that she just helped me open up and to, like, share myself and what I was going through, and it was just, just this very beautiful, soft conversation, um, where she really was so encouraging and she allowed me to talk. But then at the end of it, I remember just so clearly like her words. And remember, this is this is almost like a, I'd only met this girl one other time. So I'm going to call her a half stranger. She just looked me straight in the eye and said, Sarah, I just want you to know, like after this, you will never be broken by anything. Like God will not allow it. I think she said that like God, <laughs> God will not let you be broken by anything again. And I think like tears filled filled my eyes, and it was so beautiful. Like I needed to hear those words. Then I was feeling I was feeling so broken, and just for a half stranger to give me that hope in that moment, like, come on, isn't that what we're on Earth for? Is to encourage each other like that. So beautiful human being, um, and yeah. The, so it's something like that. Those are just the little stories I want to share about just how amazing people are, how good people are. And uh, I hope you enjoy listening to little things like that. Um, no spectacular visuals or anything. I think these are just going to be literally me sitting as if we're having a conversation and telling you about my life and my travels and meeting people abroad and meeting people here in the U.S. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I am being eaten alive. I want you guys to know this. I was super zen this whole time. I have bugs crawling at my back. Up my arms. I'm gonna be a itchy mess tomorrow. <laughs> Sending love and blessings. Mwah.